The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal. And white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the American agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and discover why tens of thousands of Americans compete to create the biggest bucks in the world. And by the biggest bucks, we don't just mean the size of the antlers. The financial investment opportunities produced even on small parcels of rural land will blow you away. Join me as we discover how white-tailed genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So on today's program, we're out of Cross Plains, Texas, at Mossy Rock Whitetails. Now, yep, we're gonna show you some big old whitetail deer. Now, this is actually the third visit I've come out here, but we're gonna show you something besides big whitetail deer. We're gonna show you some incredible exotic animals. Hello, my name is Michael Devaney. We're here at Mossy Rock Whitetails in Cross Plains, Texas. So the ranch is around 2,400 acres total under high fence. Um, we have about 35 acres of deer pens and uh, the rest of the property is all under one continuous fence. We have around 350 adult whitetails in the pens at this time. We've got a herd of about 30 to 40 sable and 30 to 40 kudu. We've got about 25 adult female impala and one big male and 30 to 40 gimsbug. It was about 75 years ago that people started bringing exotic animals to the Texas area. And the reason why they started bringing them over here because the habitat is perfect. I mean, many of these animals that were brought over, it saved them from extinction because in their native land, they had been overhunted, mismanaged, and they're extinct. But the exotic animals, when you bring them over to Texas, the environment, the natural habitat is so similar to where they originally came from that they thrive and thrive exceptionally well. So we started the exotic program just to diversify sales on the ranch and just have another avenue for income for the ranch. Uh, that world was starting to become appealing to the owner. He's always loved Africa. Um, and we've always had some exotics, but you know, took a big plunge in about three, four years ago to really start uh, raising them to sell to other ranches. It's a lot of fun to go out on the ranch. That, that literally brings my wife and family out too because they like seeing all the different animals out on the ranch and it's just you know we do it because we love it we, we love the animals and you know we're raising them for a breeding stock it's a lot of fun so that really brings another aspect into us that, that makes our ranch a lot of fun and, and really it makes the ranch great having all that kind of stuff too besides just only whitetail so i've been fortunate enough to hunt just about every species of animal that they have out here and so if somebody was to say hey what is your favorite species you know i mean I love sable, okay, sable are beautiful, they're classy. And gimsbuck, who could not like a gimsbuck? But out of all of them, uh, the animals that I've hunted in the past over in Africa, and the animals that I like here the most are the kudu. Kudu, there's something about them. They're called the gray ghost by many, and there's a reason why. It's because they are, they're incredibly adaptive to their environment, and they disappear instantly back in the trees, and. Uh, there's just something cool and something classy about a kudu. So here's something coming up. I promise you, you have never seen this before. So we're out filming these Impala and they've got Impala roaming around out here at Mossy Rock. And all of a sudden it's like, look, there's a skunk. Now pay real close attention to this. There's a skunk. And that Ram Impala, he comes up to it, sticks his nose down there and whoop! The skunk grabs a hold of him and look what happens. I have never seen anything like that in my life, and we were just lucky enough to capture it on video. Stay tuned, because we'll be showing you some awesome two-year-olds. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and Vandergriff Toyota in Arlington, Texas. Now it's time for one of our frequently asked questions. So when you have a broken antler, one way to uh, that what we treat it is uh, we use this little spray right here. It's like a, a, a lume, alumend, 
Okay, it's a little aluminum spray. We spray it on their antlers, it's silver, and uh, it keeps the flies and bugs out. It basically seals it uh, from anything getting in there and causing a problem. So whenever we have an issue with an antler, we cut it off, spray it with this little spray. And what I'm doing, I'm just waiting and make sure I'm waiting for the bag of fluids to go into him, the blood to stop, and then I'm gonna spray the burrs with this, and then we'll reverse them. Anyway, if you've got questions, we've got answers, head on over to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com and hit the FAQ tab where we've got tons of answers to questions. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you ever wondered how a deer farmer makes money, stay tuned because we'll show you some awesome stalker bucks. I think it's important to point out that as private landowners, we always want to leave our land better than the way it was when we found it. And the same here is true. Uh, Kurt Mai is the owner of Mossy Rock Whitetails. And Kurt wound up, he bought this piece of property and the wildlife wasn't on it when he bought it like it is now. And it's because his love and passion for the outdoors, it has made this property actually what it is today. You know, Kurt's the kind of guy, he's, he's in the oil business, he's really busy all the time, but if he's on this ranch, he's hands-on. You're gonna see him on the tractor and you're gonna see him working the deer pens, he's hands-on and he loves this ranch and he loves the wildlife that's on it. All right, so we just showed you what's happening with the exotics out here at Mossy Rock Whitetails. And uh, now we're going to show you some two-year-olds. Check these guys out here. I mean, this is a pretty impressive pen of them. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, I guess, three years since I was here last. I believe so. And, uh, I mean, these are some great deer. That Man, what, okay, so they're all two years old. Yes, sir. Okay. Who's that one great big guy right there, big framey guy? That one's uh, 8106. He's an up-and-comer that we're really keeping a close eye on. Okay, so these deer, uh, were they all born here? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so you bred their moms, you got their moms? Yes, sir. He's actually out of one of our breeder's womb sisters. Oh, uh, really? Flash Flood. Okay. So he's flash high flood, heat on yeah. Flash Flood's sister. Okay. We'll show you what Flash Flood uh, looked like uh, on this show, but uh, that deer right there, so you're going to hold on to him? Are you going to breed yeah, we'll, him this year? we'll probably breed him a little bit. We'll, we'll eventually name him. We hadn't came up with a name yet, but he'll be kind of one of our new up-and-comers to keep an eye on. Okay, speaking of names, I think it's really kind of cool in the deer industry. I mean, you'll if you follow some of these uh, deer breeders online, on Facebook, for example, yeah. they always have contests. Oh, but, yeah. You know, they'll, they'll give a straw semen if you come up with a good name, you know? So everybody's trying to come up with the best names. And it used to be, you could look at the pedigrees, like, what well, is pedigree on him? You're High saying- High heat on Flash Flood Sister. Okay, so they a lot of guys would take a look at the Nadar pedigree, and then they'd pick out something on there to, to yeah. name the deer. But now yeah. it's kind of moving away from that. Right, trying <laughs> to be original. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, but okay, so these other deer in here, yep. um, you're gonna hold everybody till three or what? For the most part, we've sold a few out of here. Um, you know, guys come by and wanna pick a few out to breed does on their ranches. Mm -hmm. So okay. this guy right here is, you know, real big frame, pretty deer, and he just had to have him. Well, there's, there's a lot of good deer in here though. I mean, for y'all, y'all are so picky. How long you been breeding now? Like 10 years. And how many deer you got in the program? About. 350 adults. Yeah, okay, yeah. so man, that's big, okay. Yeah. I know you've added pens. This is actually a new pen here. Yeah, yeah, it's one of our new buck pens. We, we and, like. and it's big. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that, I mean, they're up back and forth going Come on in, that drive fence. around, check them out real good. It, it's just, uh, we like being able yeah, to get in here with them. Yeah, it doesn't pressure them very much. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. so um, do most of the deer you hold over till they're three or do you sell them at two? We try to hold most of them to three. Uh, you know, like I said, if a guy comes in and just wants to buy one or two, we'll, we'll sell some two-year-olds, but mm -hmm. for generally, we keep most of them until they're three. Okay, and why is that? Just so we can get one more last look at them to see if they make a breeder. You know, we're breeding cleaner, and sometimes it might take a little longer for that deer to really show us what he's gonna be. Well, I know that uh, I'm, I'm looking at these guys straight across the board. They're cleaner than they were the last time I was absolutely. here. Absolutely. Is that deliberate? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, they, the ranch customers, the guy that are stocking their ranches, they've kind of told us that's what they're looking for, so we're trying to breed for our customers. Okay. And that's the kind of deer we like, you know? We, that's the kind of deer I like. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the kind of deer that that our industry is uh, moving back. I mean, every industry, I mean, it seems like they have a trend that they go to. Well, right now, this is the trend, going back to framey, typical white-tailed deer. And uh, what we're gonna do is you're, you're probably watching this and thinking, where do these deer go? I mean, these are 
these are big. He's talking about they sell them and then and, and a few of them at two. And the rest of these guys, unless it's a breeder, they're going to all go at three. Yes. And, yes. and you absolutely. may be wondering, where do they go? Well, what we're going to do after the break, we're going to tell you, Michael's going to sit down and tell you exactly where these deer go and why. And then we're going to show you a deer by the name of Mastercraft. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Divine Genetics, LE Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, Massey Ferguson Tractors at UVC Power Sports, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction, the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on. Rafter P Construction will be with you every step of the way to make your one-of-a-kind build a reality. One of the big things for all the ranch owners out there, I mean, to add value to their property, one good way to do it is buying genetically superior deer and turning them out on their ranch to help bring the genetics of their pasture up. All right, so so this is the breeder pen. Every time I've come out here, this is the pen. It's got you got some trees in here and all for nice and shade, but uh, this is the breeder pen. Yeah. So. I want to know who that guy is right there. That's, that Ma is that's Mastercraft right there. Okay, and he is, he, you can tell he's, he's mature. Look yeah. at the tines on him. Oh, that's the thing we love most about him. I mean, he stands out. Everybody everybody that comes, I mean, they point out that tine length. He's, the, uh, he's how old is he now? He's five this year. Okay, and pedigree on him is? Express, Maxpo XL, Texas Queen. Yeah, well, that is an unbelievable deer. And yeah. I, I know inside, if you come out to Mossy Rock Whitetails, you're going to walk in their office, and inside their office, uh, they've got all these mounts of all these deer, and you're going to see Mastercraft at, I guess it's three. Three, that's, yeah, and then and, that one sticks out above them all. Like, yeah. Everybody wants to know who Mastercraft is. Yeah, so what will happen is that uh, Mossy Rock goes, and, and they're at uh, all these deer events, okay? And if you've never been to a deer event, let me invite you to, come, to find out with Texas Deer Association to, come, to get involved uh, and come to these deer events because you're going to be able to see uh, people like Michael and, and Kurt and talk to them one-on-one -on -one and find out more about their operation. They'll invite you out, but at these deer events, what happens is that they wind up having these mounts. And so Mastercraft gets everybody's leads. Oh, every time. I mean, you don't see very many deer with 17-inch tines. Yeah, and he's and got lots of, lots of them. Yeah. Okay, and they're up. Yeah. And see, that's the look that people are looking for. And so when you talk about these are breeder bucks, uh, explain to people, if you would, that these are not your primary breeder bucks, okay? That you're AIing and then right. explain, explain. Both, that. yeah, so we AI a lot of does with different bucks from different ranches. We own interest in bucks at other ranches. Um, so we'll do a lot of AI and then we use these guys to cover, which we'll use some of these to do a lot of live breeding. We live breed Mastercraft every year. We live breed Relentless, and Majestic, and all that. Okay. But we also add genetics through our AI program. Okay, so uh, you mentioned a deer named Relentless. We're going to show Relentless to you in a little bit. You're not going to believe this deer. But uh, I want to talk about uh, partnerships, if you will. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned partnerships that you're in with, uh, I guess, with Fred and, and, and Gonzalez and you yeah. with Jordan. Yeah, so they're both co-owners of uh, Relentless. They okay. bought in with him last year when he was two. Okay, explain uh, what a partnership is to, to people and that uh, and what the benefit of that is so the benefits you know you get extra marketing from multiple ranches and i think that gives confidence to other people to breed that deer the more people involved and then the advantage of you buy in is you also you buy into deer you want to breed plus you got the upside of hope maybe getting some interest from the semen that you sell yeah so what it does also it uh, you're also able with uh, other partners to prove that deer Absolutely. You yeah, know. the more people breeding it, the more production you're going to have. So. Yeah, and so when you tell, you go to NADAR, you look at the North American Deer Registry, and you actually can go in there and you see how many offspring these have. You're, you're going to find Mastercraft, you're going to find Relentless, and you can see how many offspring these animals have and who's been breeding them and how they've been breeding them. 
Correct. And that's the, that's the most important information for a deer breeder. We can use the North American Deer Registry literally as a guide to see what is their competition doing and what can we expect predictability out of deer like Mastercraft. So uh, mm -hmm. how many offspring are out of him? Do you have any Roughly, idea? Probably 60 or so. That's nice. Yeah. So you've had an opportunity yeah. to prove him out. Yeah. And you'll continue to use him. So Absolutely. anyway, if, if y'all want more information about coming out here to Mossy Rock, Mossy Rock is in the... Uh, last night I was driving over here in the middle of the night. It's like, this is in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Okay, I mean, yeah. it really is. This is in a pretty desolate area. It's out of a town called Cross Plains, okay? And it's south of Abilene. You know, north of Brownwood, yep. kind of around the middle. And, and it's about two hours from Fort Worth. So it's we're not flat, too far arid around. country, and I'm telling you what, the deer that live here, the good thing about living in a country like this is deer like this, the deer that we're showing you, will acclimate and live on just about any property in the state of Texas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, we have very good success. With they're that. tough sons yeah. of guns. That's so, right. Anyway, give them a telephone number if they want to come out here. 936-554-4941. Okay, so after the break, we're gonna take you over and show you a buck named Relentless, and I promise you, you've never seen a deer stack like this before. No. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Maloof Whitetails, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart and White Tails of Louisiana. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. All right, so uh, you're thinking about putting up a, a high fence on your place, and uh, I think that's a good idea uh, because I call them conservation fences, but uh, there's lots of choices when it comes to fence contractors, and I wanna tell you about my friends at LE Fence. The reason why I use LE Fence, well, there's lots of reasons, but uh, the biggest reason is because they do what they say they're gonna do, when they're gonna do it, and uh, they come back if there's any problems. But one thing you're gonna find out that you're not gonna have any problems. And so I've got Ron with me uh, from LE Fence. They're located out of uh, kind of north central Texas. What we're doing right now is we're having LE Fence put up some divider fences inside our pens to actually combat an overcrowding problem that most deer farmers have in their pens. I mean, when you think about it, uh, you know, I've traveled deer farms from, uh, from New Zealand to Mexico to Canada and everywhere in between, and almost every single deer farmer has too many deer in their pens. It's for that reason that we're putting these divider fences up. Partnering on deer is important. Like for example, we're, uh, we partnered up with Limitless Genetics this year and bought in on their incredible two-year-old Inception. Uh, we just love his look, love his pedigree, and real excited to be part of the deer in the future. And so there, Relentless is at three. Look at that, you talk about stacked. Oh yeah, that's what we love about him. He's unique, he's got it all. Huge mainframe. Look at him underneath that tree. Oh my gosh, is yeah. that pretty? He's acting like a deer. He's showing off now. Yeah. yeah. My goodness, I mean, there's not too many deer that you'll ever see that are that many up tines stacked in rows. Like, how's yeah. he gonna get any more tines on those beams? Yeah, I know, it's amazing. Yeah, he blew up it too. He was a big uh, nine by nine mainframe, scored 250 mainframe and 370 overall. I mean, just a huge, beautiful deer, 30 inches wide. I mean, and then what happened? Did you breed him then? We bred him a lot, and that's when we sold half interest in him to Gonzalez Whitetails and Double Dime Whitetails. Okay, okay. And, uh, and now yeah, all we of bred sudden him a ton three. last year. We got a bunch of babies on the ground. And, and you're going to prove him. Fred's going to have babies on the ground. Jordan's going to have babies on the ground. That's right. And you're going to have, so next year at this time, we'll you're going to have yearling bucks. Yes, sir. So that way you'll be able to really see those traits and see what, see that's what right. he does. That, I mean, that's the thing we've really loved about his consistency is he's at one, two, and three. He, he got bigger and bigger, but he had the same look, real clean, mainframe, all the time stacked up, not a lot of flyers. So there's a lot of breeders that will breed a yearling if he's an outstanding yearling like Relentless was. Right. But y'all choose not to, why is that? We just, over the years, we've just decided to wait to two. You just never know from one to two what they're gonna do. They may be a great yearling and, and you know, they may not do it at two. Yeah, well see, there's some yearlings in here and the reason why the yearlings are in here, go ahead and tell them right quick. So, you know, when we pulled him out of the breeder pen, we didn't want to stick him in with the older bucks, so we put him in with the buck fawns. And, and he's the daddy he's the, he's the king of the pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. it's his pen, so he's going to be nice and safe. He's going to keep order in the pen, but... That's right. God, okay, so pedigree-wise on him? He's Voodoo's Magic on Gladiator XL on uh, Knockout Stand. Knockout was a big breeder at Lone Hollow. Mm -hmm. They sold, I think, to Ox Ranch a few years ago. Okay. Wow. Anchors well, to a... 
Doe 88, which is, you know, one of their famous anchor line. She's anchored tons of breeders. And so compared to Mastercraft, I mean, do, do you think you're going to breed this deer more than Mastercraft or he's going to have more in the registry than Mastercraft soon? Yes, absolutely. I think, I think we've already got more. Yeah, partnership and just uh, overall look. I mean, that's just, we love everything about it. Okay, if you're, if you don't, if you're, not on NADAR, if you're a deer breeder and you're not on NADAR, I think you're not using the the best tool that you could possibly use for breeding, don't you? Absolutely. It gives you so much great information and to not utilize that, and it's absolutely free. Uh, I wanna uh, kind of put a big shout out to NADAR for supporting the show and supporting the industry because it really does legitimize things in our industry oh, in a big way. 100%. Okay, so I'm gonna tell y'all something that you probably don't know, and everybody, I always tell people, tell me something I don't know. Okay, Voodoo's Magic, okay? Anybody in the industry has heard of Voodoo's Magic. You know where Voodoo's Magic was born? Right here, right in that pen over there. That's right. Okay. Him and his wound brother. Yeah, and you had his wound brother over here. We filmed him over and over and yeah. over. I mean, yeah. He, yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. So the success rate that y'all have had on breeding big, big, valuable deer is incredible. And it goes Absolutely. back, I mean, Voodoo's Magic is really the very first one. And, that, and his mother, Miss Texas, has been an integral part of our our farm. I yeah. mean, she's had numerous big sons, and one of her daughters, Tasha, is one of the most famous does in the industry. Oh, no doubt. And again, so, you can check Nate R and see yeah. how many go back to so, Tasha. Yeah, <laughs> man, and Miss Texas. I mean, she's... Yeah, yeah she, well, that's cool. Well, Michael, I want to thank you for having us out. Thank you very, very much. I want to thank you all for watching. You know, we've uh, gotten up to date, so to speak, on all the exotics that are out here now and, and why the exotics are important to Mossy Rock Whitetails and so many ranchers around the country. Exotics really have a great future. Uh, we've seen some, uh, we've seen Mastercraft again and we introduced you to Relentless and he is an absolute unbelievable deer. If you all have any questions or comments and you're watching online, you know what to do. If you're not watching online, head on over to our YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe while you're there. My name is Keith Warren and thanks for watching. Hey there, make sure and subscribe to the Deer Farming Channel by hitting the subscribe button right now. Brought to you by Rafter P Construction, the leading design build contractor in North Texas for farms and ranches. Go to rafterpconstruction.com for your dream build.